The most famous verse of all the Bible is John 3.16, for God to love the world. The second most famous, my estimation, is that poem in the Old Testament, Psalm 23. Read at almost every funeral because of its mystical power to comfort those in pain. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. It's, it's powerful. But not just because it's comforting. This is one of the most instructive leadership lessons of all the Bible. You see, the metaphor for shepherd runs from literally the beginning of Genesis to the end in Revelation. Do you remember who the very first shepherd was? Adam and Eve had these sons, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel because Abel was a shepherd and thus able to offer to God a sacrifice that God loved. Abel wasn't the only shepherd of Israel. The father of the nation, Abraham, also the father of Christianity, of course, he was, by trade, a shepherd. The rescuer of the nation, the lawgiver Moses, before he ever led the people out of Egypt, he led sheep in the wilderness for 40 years. And, and, and on it goes. The, the people of Israel looked to their leaders who had literally been shepherds. Think about King David, shepherd. So you have this paradox because the leaders going clear up to the apex of the spiritual pinnacle, the Lord is my shepherd. They're all respected as shepherds. But in reality, shepherds were not respected because partly they were dirty. They lived with sheep outdoors all day, all night. They didn't smell so well. But also, these guys were ritually unclean. Because they had to sh uh, slaughter the sheep and give birth to the sheep, it rendered them religiously, according to Jewish law, unclean. And so you've got this paradox where the literal shepherds were despised. Think back to when uh, Jacob took his 12 sons, emigrated to Egypt because of the famine. Their brother Joseph said, don't, don't, don't live among the Egyptians. Ask Pharaoh to put you in the land of Goshen, out and away, because shepherds are not so well liked. That becomes this strange paradox. Loved spiritually, despised literally. And so when leaders spiritually went bad, they're given the same kind of critique as literal shepherds. Think back to, say, Jeremiah 23 or Ezekiel 34. Two entire chapters devoted to the critique of the spiritual leaders as bad shepherds. So is it any wonder that we need a Messiah to correct the failings of past leaders? And when that Messiah comes, part of the way he described himself, this is John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. This spiritual leadership of shepherds, this, this legacy of leadership that is positive spiritually but can go very bad is reflected even in the leaders of the church. The elders or overseers, as they're sometimes called, have a third title, elder, overseer, and you know it, shepherd. It is the job of the shepherd, from which we get the title pastor, by the way, to take good care of the sheep. So, what does it take to take good care of the sheep? If you want to be a leader, whether spiritually or in a business, secular leadership, the biblical model of leadership will provide you three insights into what your true role is. Number one, a shepherd leads. When, when the sheep look for pastures, a funny thing about sheep, they will eat grass down to the root and destroy an entire area. If they aren't moved, they will destroy their own environment. Sound familiar? So the whole purpose of leadership is to move people from one place to another, to a green pasture. But no place you lead them is a place that they can settle and stay permanently. We have to move people from where they are to a desired future. That's Leadership 101. And the second thing that a leader does is he has to protect the flock from outside enemies. There are uh, lions that love to eat sheep. There are uh, coyotes and wolves that love to eat sheep. 
And so what the shepherd has to do is literally lay down his life. When Jesus said, I am the door to the sheep, sheep pens in ancient Israel, there were no doors. There were literally just openings. And you brought the sheep in and they were behind these walls. You know where the shepherd slept? In the doorway. And he's saying, if you want to take my sheep, it is over my dead body. The shepherd had a rod and a sling to fight off the enemies. And that's our job as spiritual leaders, as leaders of a family, as leaders of a community organization, is to protect our people from the outside influence. The third thing that we do for sheep, we don't actually feed sheep. We lead them to where they can feed themselves. But what we do is we heal sheep. Have you ever heard of the phrase, to pull the wool over my eyes? It comes from shepherding. Because sheep are prone to all kinds of sickness and bot flies and, and, and these parasites that get on. It is our job to constantly look for the danger zone of sheep and provide the healing that they need. Lead, protect, heal. That's the job of a leader, of a spiritual shepherd.